Hello class, this is section 4.2 and in this video we are going to discuss polynomial differential operators and one way to look at it is that this is just a notational change in the way that we write down the derivatives. So the differential operator is this capital D thing, object here, and this object basically means the derivative with respect to t. So let's go through a few examples. So remember, we can write d x, and x is a function of t. So d means derivative with respect to t. So when you write down dx, this is the same thing as saying x prime of t. Right, so basically d times any function will give you the derivative of that function with respect to t. Um, and so we often stack these differential operators too. So d squared of x simply means we take the derivative twice and this equals x to the prime of t. And sometimes we include the d with other expressions as well. As an example, d minus 2 times y is something you'll see as well. We can just distribute the d as if it were a constant. And this is equal to dy minus 2y. So this is going to be equal to y prime of t minus 2y of t. And we can distribute the other way, of, uh, the other way as well. For instance, dx minus 3y is going to be equal to dx minus 3dy. So this is going to be x prime of t minus 3y prime of t. And sometimes we even have the d's in the form of a polynomial. So for instance, d squared plus 3d minus 4 applied to y is going to be d squared y plus 3dy minus 4y. This is simply equal to y double prime of t plus 3y prime of t minus 4y of t. So again, d just means differentiate with respect to t. And you don't have to just apply this differential operator to x, t, and y, t. For instance, the d of sine t is just going to be equal to the derivative of sine, which is cosine. Similarly, d of cosine t is just going to be minus sine t. So again, you just think of d as an alternative method to write down differentiation. As a first step, we are going to have to learn how to write down a system of differential equations in the d notation. And it's always going to be this way. We're going to have to write down something times x plus something times y equals 0. And we should always make sure to write down the x's first. So we have something x plus something y in both equations. This convention will make calculations a lot easier further down the road. So as a first step, we just replace all the primes with d. So x prime equals minus 3x minus 4y simply becomes dx equals minus 3x minus 4y and dy equals 2x plus y. There is nothing mysterious here in this simple example. We're just replacing notation. The next step is to move all the terms to the left and in particular to write down the x's first before the y's. So we have dx plus 3x plus 4y equals 0 and 2x plus dy minus y equals 0. Sorry, forgot the minus sign here. So it's minus 2x plus dy minus y equals 0. And we, the last step is to factor things out. So we end up with d plus 3 times x plus 4y equals 0 and a minus 2 times x plus d minus 1y equals 0. And this is a solution that is exactly of the form that the problem asks for. 
Now you might ask why was it useful to write down this system in this way? And the reason is that we can now use some tools from algebra that we couldn't use before. So let's label the first equation Roman numeral 1 and the second equation Roman numeral 2. So remember, to solve a system, we want to reduce it to a differential equation with only one variable. So let's first try to eliminate y. We can do that by multiplying and subtracting the two equations. To get out of y, we can write down d minus 1 times the first equation minus 4 times the second equation. And what that gets us is d minus 1 times d plus 3 minus 4 times minus 2 of x plus d minus 1 times 4 minus 4 times d minus 1 times y equals to 0. And of course, d minus 1, 4, minus 4, d minus 1 cancels out, so this is just 0, and we have successfully eliminated y. What's left to do is to multiply out this term over here, and we can treat d as if it were a, a variable in the polynomial. So we end up with d squared plus 2d minus 3 plus 8 x equals 0, or d squared plus 2d plus 5 equals 0, oh, well, times x equals 0. So we can switch back to using the prime notation, so if d squared x plus 2dx plus 5x equals 0, this is going to be x prime t plus 2x prime t plus 5 xt equals 0. And we have success, successfully achieved a differential equation with just one variable. And we can use our usual method to solve it. I'm not going to go through all those details here. x equals ERT eventually gets us xt equals c1 et sine 2t plus c2 times et cosine 2t. So we can do the same thing to eliminate x to get a second equation. This time, we have to multiply the first equation by minus 2 and the second equation by d plus 3. So we have minus 2 times the first equation minus d plus 3 times the second equation and that should eliminate x and we end up with minus 2 times d plus 3 minus d plus 3 times minus 2 applied to x plus minus 2 times whatever the y was 4 minus d plus 3 times d minus 1 this applied to y and equal to 0. So it turns out that when we do this again, the x cancels out here, we get the same equation. So we have minus d squared minus 2d plus 5 y equals 0, which again we can, we can ignore the minus sign because we have a 0 on the right hand side. We end up with y double prime t minus 2y prime t plus 5y t equals 0. And again, we can find that y t is equal to c3 et sine 2t plus c4 et cosine 2t. Alright, and um, we end up with a solution for x and a solution for y. Now, unfortunately, we are not done yet, and this is not something that we'll cover in this video. 
But the point is that we have too many constants, c1, c2, c3, c4. In fact, there should only be two constants, and we need to reduce them. And we'll discuss that in the next example video. But I hope this allows you to see the power of um, this method. It allows us to use this method of subtracting equations to get an equation x and an equation in y. Uh, I will note one thing. The astute student would have noticed that we got the same equation for x and y using this method. And this will always be true if your equation is homogeneous. That is, if you have a zero on the right hand side for both equations, then this will always be true. You always get the same equation for x and for y. It is, however, not true when this equation is non-homogeneous, when you have a term on the right hand side. Um, but we'll discuss that in another example video as well.